Okay? So, as you can see on the title, there is the future. So the first thing we can say is that we hope that there will be a future for Scilab. What I will explain very briefly is what are our plans and projects about Scilab and about the structure around Scilab. The key points of the future of Scilab are the following. The latest release of Scilab is Scilab 4.1 that was released last December. As I explained yesterday, this Scilab is the Scilab which comes from old pro program, old software made by Inria since 1980. And we think that this is the end of this Scilab. The end means that we want to build now a brand new Scilab compatible and based on the old one but with, with new features. I am going to explain how. So what we want to do before the end of 2007 is two things. First, to have a new and reinforced organization of Scilab Consortium. And two, to have a new Scilab version, what we call Scilab 5. I told you that Scilab Consortium in reality doesn't exist. It's only but in real, because the members of Scilab Consortium have contract with INRIA. So Scilab Consortium now is INRIA. So we plan to have in the future, in the near, very near future, uh, an organization, a real organization like a foundation, and you, you, you can have in mind something like the Mozilla Foundation, for instance. The Mozilla Foundation making software like Firefox, Thunderbird, and others. This is the kind of model we want to have. And we are thinking about it, but what we want to do is to have in this new structure various kind of members and to prepare everything to have an infra infrastructure for service around Scilab. Because in fact, the problem we have is many times, and in particular, industrial people ask for that. They ask for support, they ask for services, they ask for many things, and we are not able to give this. So what we plan to have is not particularly that we can do that, but that we can have around us, and we can organize around us the way to do that with small companies or big companies that, for instance, we can certify. We can say, we work with these companies that can do service, that can do support, that can do formation. There are also people asking for um, helping us to migrate from MATLAB to Scilab, or these kind of things. And we plan to have around us a structure to do that. What we can do also is more support for developing toolboxes. At the present time, the only thing we have is on Scilab website uh, explanation of how to make toolboxes, but it's not enough. We can do more. And what we plan to do is to have a sort of toolbox certification. Until now, everybody can upload the toolbox, the contribution he made on Scilab website but they are all put in the same basket. And what we, will be very interesting for us is to review, to have a system of review of the toolboxes, of a contribution, and to be able to say, this contribution is good. This one, you can rely on it to have something like that. This is very time consuming. This demand more people, and we hope to do this in the future. And we could do the same kind of things for companies, companies that can be certified, not only in France, but everywhere in the world. Companies saying, ah, we are certified by Scilab Consortium. We can also, why not develop some kind of toolboxes? And what we want to do is having partners in the world. It's not possible for Scilab Consortium based in Paris to be able to address India, China, USA, and so on. 
So you need to have partners all around the world to help us and not us to help Scilab. This comes with a new Scilab. I call it Scilab 5. I will give you a few information about Scilab 5. The, the purpose we are following is to have Scilab for everybody at all levels. Everybody means that everybody who has to make all-purpose numerical computation could use Scilab. From that, it needs to be very easy to use. And at all level means that in secondary school, in university, in research, in companies, it also could be used for all purpose. And this is very important. Because if you learn Scilab to students in secondary school, they will use it in the future. And you can tell them you use a software that will be used in the future when you will be engineers. And we want this Scilab to be very easy to interoperability with other kind of software. Scilab is not going to do everything in numerical computation, but it, we want it to be capable to link easily with other software. Until now, what we did, we ran behind MATLAB in order to have a good Scilab software. But what we want to do now is to be better than MATLAB in specific domain. You also see that Scilab can be better than MATLAB in a few uh, domain like uh, uh, cycles, like uh, solving uh, differential equation and so on. But now we want to have very, very comprehensive domain where we can say MATLAB cannot do it or MATLAB do it very bad. And we want, we are going to see that Scilab is doing this better. For instance, I was talking this morning about code generation. MATLAB is not able to generate from MATLAB code very simple code, C code. Also, we are working hard to have a Scilab working for high performance computing and for grid computing. And this is very important for grid computing, for instance, because if you want to use MATLAB for grid computing, having uh, 10 MATLAB or 100 MATLAB working on 100 processor, you need to pay for them. With Scilab, it's not necessary to pay for them. So this can be very important. And we can have other kind of topics we can define with consortium members or other partners. About the technical points of Scilab 5, what we are doing now, and we have nearly done, is taking the Scilab 4, cleaning the code, reorganize the code, and make modules into the code. It was a very old code, and we needed to have it very new. So the way we did entails a code with various modules. So it will be easier to maintain and easier to have people work with us with some parts of the code. So multi-threading, new graphic rendering, this is very important, and new graphic user interface and creation of user interface using Java. And we are beginning of doing this for Scilab. I know that people say, oh la la, Java is very heavy. It's not true, it depends what you do. I can show you programs and example of programs using Java interface and very light. So we want to do that. And Serge talked about in Scilab there is a fixed stack when you use it of memory. You can have more, but you need to do it. You want to have a new interpreter and new memory management with um, dynamic allocation of memory. The documentation, this is true that uh, some people here said that uh, we need to improve it. We know that. And also, you know that at the present time, Psychos is completely developed outside uh, of Scilab team. It's developed by this project, which is a research project. It will stay in this research project, but the part which is computer science, which is graphic user interface, will be taken by Scilab team. So all these points are very important for us, and this is Scilab. And what we want to do here is modify the way the memory is used to modify the parser, 
to modify the API between the parser and the, the, the routine here. And very important here, graphic user interface, graphics, graphic in user interface creation to have here Java taking care of everything. So we will have in the future only one version of Scilab working everywhere. And very important, the interoperability with other kind of software, grid, computing, visualization, 3D, or animation, and very kind of things. This is what we want to do for the future for Scilab. I talked about the future of Scilab in general, but I'm here and we need to talk about the future of Scilab in India. I'm very happy to see many people already using Scilab at a very uh, high level. And uh, the problem is that we don't know that. It's not possible for us to know what people do with Scilab in the world. So I think that conference like this are very important for that. But what we can do in the future is to strengthen the collaboration between us and you and India. Everything is open. We can have a Scilab consortium partner here in India. You are talking about user group, two, two entities, only one, I don't know. You can help us doing Scilab development. Now that I told you that Scilab will be modular, it will be possible and make contribution by making toolboxes, but also tutorials, documentation. There are a lot of things, a lot of work to do. And what is very important is to make a coordination of everything. Because I, I don't know if it is this morning somebody talked, said that it was very difficult to know uh, what other people do. There is Scilab News Group, but it's not enough. So a strong coordination between you and us would be very important to share what we do, not to do twice the same thing, and to be able to capitalize what people do in France, in India, and in the world. I think that this is really the way for the success for the future of Scilab.